This is the first lesson in the unit F325 on transition metals. In this lesson, you'll learn how to write the electron configuration of the first period of the transition metals, period 4. You'll learn the definition of a transition metal, and finally we'll look at a particular property of transition metals, which is having a variable oxidation state. Before we start, you'll need to have your data sheet or a copy of the periodic table in front of you, and you'll also need a pen and some paper. So if you need to, pause the video now and go and find a periodic table, a pen and some paper. Now to begin on what you should have already know about um, electron configuration. Electrons fill energy levels from the lowest energy level to the highest energy level. And each energy level contains subshells. These are S, P, D and F. Each subshell contains orbitals, and each orbital can contain up to two electrons. The S subshell, which is spherical, contains only one orbital. The P subshell, which contains three orbitals, can contain up to six electrons, and each orbital is dumbbell shaped. The D subshell contains five orbitals, and so can contain up to ten electrons. And finally, the F subshell has seven orbitals, which can each hold up to 14 electrons. In Unit 1, you only had to write the electron configurations of the elements up to calcium. In this unit, you will need to write the electron configurations of the first row of the D block elements, scandium to zinc. If we recap how to write electron configurations using calcium as our example, its atomic number is 20, so it has 20 electrons. So 1s fills first with 2 electrons, followed by 2s with 2, then 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, and finally 4s2. When we come to the transition metals, as you go across period 4, from scandium to zinc, the 3d orbital fills. The 3d orbital has a higher energy level than 4s, which is why 4s fills before 3d. As we mentioned before, a d subshell can hold up to 10 electrons in 5 orbitals. So if we write the electron configuration of scandium, which has 21 electrons, we start, as we always do, with 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2 and 3d1. As we go along from scandium to titanium to vanadium, we add an unpaired electron sequentially into the 3d orbital. The diagram in the table illustrates the electron arrangement. Each arrow in the boxes on the right represents an electron and each box an orbital. The 4s has only one orbital with two electrons and the 3d subshell has five orbitals. When we get to chromium, an electron is taken from the 4s subshell so all d orbitals contain one unpaired electron. This happens because this arrangement is more stable and the 3d and 4s subshells are very close in energy. So the electron arrangement of chromium can be written as 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s1, 3d5. When we move on to the next metal, the electron goes back and fills up the 4s subshell and the 3d orbitals continue to fill sequentially and the electrons pair up in the orbitals. When copper is reached, in much the same way as chromium, an electron is then taken from the 4s subshell so all 3d orbitals can contain two paired electrons. So the electron arrangement of copper is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s1, 3d10. Pause the video and have a go at writing the electron configuration of vanadium, which has an atomic number of 23, nickel, which has an atomic number of 28, and zinc, which has an atomic number of 30. The next slide will give you the answers.
We are now going to move on to writing the electron configuration of ions of transition metals. As with all transition metals, they form positive ions because they lose electrons. However, unlike other metals, many transition metals can form ions with different charges because the number of electrons they lose can vary. When writing the electron configuration of transition metal ions, you need to remember that electrons are lost from the 4s subshell first before the 3d subshell. I'll repeat that really important point. Electrons are lost from the 4s subshell first. The easiest way to write out the electron configuration of transition metal ions is to write out the electron configuration of the element and then take away the required number of electrons. So, let's do some examples. Mn2 plus manganese. The manganese atom has the configuration 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, 3d5. Manganese 2 plus has lost two electrons. Therefore, we take both these electrons from the 4s subshell, so the electron configuration is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 3d5. We don't even write the 4s in there. Another example is a Cu2 plus ion. Copper, a copper atom has the configuration 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s1, 3d10. Copper has lost two electrons. The first one is taken from the 4s subshell, and then the second one is taken from the 3d subshell. So the electron configuration is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 3d9. There is a difference between d block elements and transition elements. Remember that a d block element, as with s and p elements, has its outer electron in a d subshell. So scandium through to zinc are all d block elements. However, the definition of a transition element is that it forms an ion with a partially filled d orbital. In fact, only titanium to copper are known as transition elements in period 4 as they have ions with an incomplete d-subshell. Scandium only forms a 3-plus ion, and zinc only forms a 2-plus ion, which means they both lose the electrons from the 4s-subshell first, leaving either an empty, in the case of scandium, or a full, in the case of zinc, subshell. So therefore, they don't classify as transition elements. Pause the video and have a go at writing the electron configuration of Fe2 plus and Ti plus. The next slide will give you the answers. Check your answers with the ones on the screen. Right. Finally, we're going to move on to the different properties of transition metals. One of which is that they form or have variable oxidation states. Or put another way, they form ions with different charges. This is because the 4s and 3d orbitals have very similar energies. And so the transition elements can lose electrons from just the 4s, forming 2 plus ions, or from both the 4s and the 3d orbitals. For example, we've already come across um, the ions of iron 2 plus and 3 plus and their electron configurations are shown on the screen. So to work out the oxidation state of a transition element in a compound or a complex ion you just need to follow the rules that you learnt last year. To go over these, these were the elements on their own have an oxidation state of 0. Fluorine in a compound has an oxidation state of minus 1 and oxygen has a, uh, in a compound has an oxidation state of minus 2. All group 1 ions have an oxidation state of plus 1 or group 2 ions plus 2 or group 6 ions have minus 2 or group 7 ions have minus 1 etc. So let's carry out an example. What is the oxidation state of manganese in KMO4? I don't know whether I said that right. KMnO4, potassium manganate. Well, potassium has an oxidation state of plus 1. Oxygen, minus 2. And there are four of them, so that adds up to minus 8. 
there is no overall charge in the compound, so plus 1 add x is equal to 0. So x must be equal to plus 7. A further example is chromium in, in the chromate ion, Cr2O7 2 minus. Well, oxygen has an oxidation state of minus 2, and there are 7 of them. So that's equal to minus 14. The overall charge on the ion is 2 minus, and there are 2 chromiums. So therefore, the oxidation state of, of each chromium must be plus 6. Now, pause the video and have a go at the following example, V2O5. Don't worry if you're not sure about any of this. You can re-watch the video or you can read this, the relevant pages of the textbook, which are pages 202 to 205. We will be going through lots more questions in class and also carrying out a practical where I'll see all the different coloured oxidation states of vanadium. Check you've got the right answer for the oxidation state of vanadium in that compound. And we'll see you again next lesson.